Hi friends, uh, welcome to the second video of RxJS Simplified the complete course guide of RxJS. So in the first video we have discussed about the course outline. Uh, we have discussed uh, all the topics which will be covered and we'll be taking the first uh, topic. So what is RxJS? What problem does it solve? And why do we need to use RxJS? What is the concept of an observable? And little bit background and why did we reach to observable? And all we'll be covering in the these chapters. My name is Vinod Kumar. Welcome to my channel. Let's get started friends. So what is RxJS? So here is the definition, friends, which I have taken from the RxJS uh, website. So let's see the complete definition once go through the definition and then we'll break down each sentence and we'll try to understand the meaning of each sentence uh, in deep. Okay. Uh, what is RxJS? So they say that RxJS is a library for composing asynchronous and event-based programs by using observable sequences. It provides one code type, the observable, the satellite types. So they say that observable, scheduler, and subjects. And there are a lot of operators inspired by array methods to allow handling asynchronous events as collections. So they are saying that think of RxJS as a Lodash for events. So for people who doesn't know Lodash, Lodash is a utility library, which a lot of people use in the community. So they are telling that, so RxJS is a Lodash for events. So we will break down the first sentence and uh, we'll see like what each word means in the coming slides. So they are saying RxJS is a library. So it's not a framework. It's a library for composing asynchronous and event based programs. What is asynchronous programming? We'll see. And by using observable sequences or observable streams, we'll see the notion of observable streams in the coming slides. What is the difference between a library versus framework? So library is an application code. You where developers can use these methods to change the application flow. So as I told you, library is the util methods. So you can use those in your day-to-day uh, -day life or in your coding to make your life simpler. Okay. So some of the examples are uh, Lodash, Moment, RxJS, and React. So what is framework? Framework is a one-stop solution for building web applications. It can also be a collection of libraries. So framework, it's a collection of libraries. You can have all the libraries built into one to make one framework, or you can develop an entire framework uh, to develop a web applications. So library is just a util method, friend. So Python uses a lot of libraries and uh, framework is similar to that of an Angular. Some of the examples are AngularJS, Vue.js, and these are all frameworks. So so framework contains a lot of modules in built. Uh, so you get a uh, forms, you get a uh, state management, uh, uh, you get all the pre features uh, which you won't get them into a library. So I will give you some pictorial representation with that. You will understand the difference between a library and framework and going forward uh, because this is a course and we'll be making everything as a simplified. So we'll go through some of the pictures and then see what is the difference between a library and a framework. So in order to construct a house, so we'll be making use of all these tools, right? So each tool does something for you. So that's, you can think them as a library. So library, this one complete picture is a library where you have individual methods, which does do perform its own task, right? So similarly, uh, what is the difference between the framework? So in order to construct a house, you need bricks, you need cement, you need steel. So think of them like uh, each individual libraries. Uh, so you, you can combine all these libraries in order to build a house, right? So similarly, you can build a house by giving completely to a complete builder. So he does the work for you and he will deliver the house. Uh, so similarly, framework can be a collection of individual libraries or you can use this framework as like an angular. So you get all of them pre-built uh, into one so where the builder handovers the house to you. So this is the difference between a library and a framework. So RxJS is a library for composing asynchronous and event-based program by using observable sequences. So we have break down what is library, what is the difference between library and a framework. Now we'll cover what is asynchronous and event-based programming, okay? So as JavaScript is a single threaded application so each code needs to be run and then only the next code will be executed so if here you can see in the picture like a, a process a so once the process a is completed process b starts and process a another step will wait for the process b to complete and then 
the maybe the other chunk of the process a starts so in the asynchronous programming right uh, so the next code doesn't wait for you to complete so it's executed as them in the parallel and then they notify something whenever that event is done so here if the process a the process a is still continuing but the process b has started so once the process b has end so it gives some notification to the process a so this is a synchronous programming and this is an asynchronous programming so let's jump into the practical plans. Uh, so we'll see what is synchronous and asynchronous programming based on inclusiveness, uh, intervals, and as well as timeouts. So I'm using Stagblitz Uh This is an open source and you can use them on directly on your browser in order to execute the JavaScript. So I will give this a uh, URL. Uh, I will give you in this comment section as the first comment as well as the description. You can use this URL, you can fork this, and you can continue working and to get more understanding so so in the matter of time so i have written some code snippets and then we'll execute and then see uh, the understanding between the synchronous and asynchronous programming so here if at all you see three comments so statement one and then the for loop and then the statement two so this is how javascript works friends so in order to complete this statement it needs to complete the for loop and then only tries to jump into the next statement uh, so as we have seen in the previous uh, slides right so statement one continues and process b like for loop continues and then the statement two executes so we'll try to understand like what is asynchronous programming based on some event listeners so so document dot add event listener uh, we are adding a click event and then are giving a callback so what is this callback so whenever the click happens then this function will get executed so if you try to put this console before and after okay this document dot add event listener if you see statement one execute and statement two immediately execute because this is an asynchronous or a callback will happen only when a event happened on the document. So suppose if at all I click here, right? So there is an event happening. So I will refresh the page in order to make it simplified. So there is a click callback which happened, right? So this is like whenever this clip happened, this callback function will get executed, okay? So we'll see one more example example regarding what is set timeout. So set interval is a function. Uh, which takes a no callback function as well as a timer so for each one second this callback will be executed it's like a stream of all the events for each second okay so if you see zero one two three and it's continuous uh infinite time so till we close or till we uh, so this set interval gives you a timeout uh, or a clear interval and then we can clear that till the time you will get an infinite values over here okay. so this is regarding the set interval and we'll see what is called as a set timeout set set timeout is also similar to that of a set interval it takes same uh, parameters one is a function and one is a timer so set timeout will execute only once after this particular amount of time you can give a one second or three seconds but set interval continues to execute the same code for each second like what for each time what you have given so if you see here for after three seconds it gives you the log in timeout callback so here if at all you see so this is a synchronous programming and here what we have made we have made something similar to that of an asynchronous programming where the the console statements before and after will get executed but these get executed after a particular period of time okay so if you want to check this console log over for the set timeout we can do that statement one statement two executed and only after the three seconds this console statement has executed so this is similar to that of an asynchronous programming and we have also done using an event based which is a click event handler on the document now that we have seen what is a event listeners intervals and timeouts uh, so we'll see a practical demo on like what happens when it you combine all these multiple events uh, so we, here we'll take a question so the question goes like this so perform a task A after three seconds, which internally performs another task for every one second after the user has clicked anywhere on the document. Okay. So when user has document, some task needs to be performed after three seconds, which internally performs another task for every one second. Okay. 
Okay. Here is a code snippet, but before that, on the left hand side, we have previously discussed the code is in the commented code. Uh, here is the code snippet uh, regarding that question. So we need to add an event listener which internally performs a task A after three seconds. Okay. This is like after three seconds, which internally performs another task B for each second. Okay. Okay. So we'll see the output. So as of now, nothing happens, friends, because I haven't clicked on the document. So let's see the console output once I click on the document. So event on the document has triggered and after three seconds, timeout has occurred. And for each second, the interval is logged. Okay. So, so what will happen uh, if you write the code in this way, right? So this provides a lot of callbacks. So here is one callback. Inside this callback, you have one more code, you have another callback, and here you have one more callback. Okay. So this results in a problem called as a callback hell. So what is callback hell? A function, and inside that function, you have a callback, and another function which has a callback, another function which has a callback, and this pattern continues. And this is a problem called as a callback hell. So remember friends, this will be asked in a lot of interview questions as well. Uh, so this is where the promise has come into the picture. It resolved the problem called as a callback hell. This is the birth of promise and to solve this callback hell. Okay. Now that you have understood what is asynchronous and event based program, we'll see what is called as an observable sequence. So observable is a blueprint of a stream. So now that I have told this statement, so now you might get a question like what is a stream? So let's see by a pictorial explanation. So what is a stream? A stream is nothing but a collection of some task, like it's a collection of some multiple values over a period of time. So here we'll try to understand the notion of streams. So it's a collection of click events in our example and emit multiple values over a period of time. So over a particular period of time, it's continuously emits some value, okay? So in our example, like event listeners, set interval and set timeout. Uh, like a notion of streams. If you like the effort that I'm trying to put in order to make this content available in a more simpler manner, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it to get all the new videos straight into your feed. Uh, please also hit the like button. So what's coming up next in the further videos? So we'll understand what is the concept of this promise. Uh, we'll deep dive into like observable. And once we understand these both concepts, we'll see the differences between the promises and observables. So let's summarize what all we have learned today. We have learned about what is RxJS, uh, what is the difference between a library and a framework, what asynchronous and event-based programming mean. Uh, we have seen a couple of demos. We have seen the birth of promise. Uh, we have seen what is observable. We have understood what is the notion of streams. So stay tuned for the coming videos. So thank you friends, uh, thanks for watching. My name is Vinod Kumar Divala. Here are some social handlers. So please do follow them for more content and more articles. I get uh, posted into these uh, websites and LinkedIn posts. Uh, please do like, share and subscribe and share it with your friends. Uh, thank you friends, thanks a lot.